One of the things that people who are new to teaching in higher education get really worried about is how they're going to manage the first lot of assessment they have to do because they very often feel underprepared, they very often feel they don't know what they're doing and they very often feel they don't really know what the standard is. And it has been the case in the past that people would say, oh, you're a bright girl, just do what you, you experience yourself as a student. And frankly, that isn't enough. So what I'm talking about here just now is some of the things that you might want to bear in mind when you're undertaking your first bit of assessment, whether it's essays or tests or lab works or whatever it is. And the first thing I would say is find yourself a good buddy or mentor. This doesn't have to be somebody who's been doing it for years. It can be somebody who's just a bit more experienced than you. And ask them to show you the ropes, work alongside you. Because the th key thing you're trying to do is work out what the standard is. Now, when it comes to anything you're marking, I would suggest you start off, first of all, about thinking about the five levels it's likely to be. Level one. It's absolutely stunning. It's more than you could ever have hoped for. It's probably better than you could do yourself. Number two, it's pretty damn good. You can see a few flaws in it, but actually on the whole, that would give a pretty good result. Number three, it's fine. It's got bumpy bits. It's a bit flaky in places, but it's good and there's quite a lot to be said for it. Number four, it's good enough. It's not stunning. It just about hits baseline. And number five, not good enough. And you're getting that good enough and not good enough by comparing it with the criteria. Now, it's difficult to try and do that specifically. And it's absolutely impossible for even experienced assessors to be able to make a really definitive decision between, say, 62 and 63. But in the British system, which is different from other nations, number one equals first class honours degree. Next one, two, 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 one. Next one, two, two. Next one, third. Next one, fail. So you've got to try and fit it into those areas. And then most universities, if you look at their documentation, have numbers that match onto it. And the British system, again, very different from other nations, has most undergraduate courses, the pass mark is 40. So everything is up from there. In some subjects, like physics and maths, you will get high 90s and even full marks. But in most subject areas, people range those five levels of mark somewhere between about 70 or 80 and down to somewhere between 20 and 40. So that's your kind of range of marks you're going to use. Now, when you hit with a big pile of marking for the first time, let's just say, for the sake of argument, it's a pile of handwritten scripts. You aren't going to be able to sort that out straight away. You're going to have to read your way in. And what I would suggest you do is you, if you're looking at physical scripts, start throwing them on the floor in five piles. I think that's great. I think that's awful. And spread them all out. You can do this with up to 50 or 60 scripts until you've got a feel for it. Because actually the very first time you do it, you'll be moving things between the two piles. Once you've got things more or less sorted out where you want them to be in terms of overall feel for how good the work is, then you should start thinking about assigning numbers to that which match up to the criteria, either very close to very good or not very close to very good, and you can then put numbers within your scale. Having done that, you're nearly ready to start writing on them because everything you've done so far will be tentative and either in pencil or stuck onto the actual work itself with post-it notes or similar. This is the point at which you start to think about how students are going to receive what they're getting. And feedback really matters to students, so putting some feedback on their work that's going to be helpful to them, developmental, tell them where to go next, not beat them into submission by making them feel negative or unhappy, but being robust at the same time. And you need to be framing the feedback in ways that are going to move the students up to the next level, whether they're 
down towards the bottom of the scale or right at the top because even the very best students deserve some feedback on how to maximise their own potential. And you're going to have a lot of work to do here and the first time you'll do it you'll think I cannot possibly cope with this workload. But the only thing I can say to you is if you do it properly it'll always be time consuming. But this is one of the most important things you do for students so they are learning through assessment. But you will get faster and that anybody who's done it for years can promise. So you've got the marks, you've got the scale, you've got the feedback and then you go back to your mentor and you say, could you have a little look at this? Do you feel I've got this right? Could you have a look at the kind of commentary I've given? Could you advise me whether that's about what we do around here? And then the next thing you can do is to more or less complete the task and submit things. But it's terribly important that when you are marking like this, you are realistic with yourself. Nobody can mark for two hours solidly without much of a break. Most people say, mark for just under the hour, take 10 minutes, five minutes, mark for another hour, have a cup of coffee. These little breaks don't need to be massive. You can just stand and look out the window or do a yoga stretch or something. The key thing is don't be unrealistic and don't think you can pull an all-nighter. If this is your first time ever, you're going to have to say to people, you're going to have to give me a little bit more time if you're struggling. That way, your first assessment is less likely to be a nightmare and actually be something that you're starting to feel confident and happy about.